the Debian 13 operating system has been released. And just in case you didn't know, this is the base operating system upon which Raspberry Pi OS is based. So let's go see if we can upgrade a Raspberry Pi right here on Jeff's Pie in the Sky. Hello once again, Pi geeks and techno nerds all over the world. My name's Jeff, and I'm an IT professional who's been in the industry for over 30 years. I've been using Raspberry Pi since they first came out, and I wanted to share with you some of the projects that I've done over the years. If you like what you see on this channel, please hit that thumbs up button, subscribe if you want to see more, and hit that notification bell so you can be told when I put a new video out. Let me know in the comments how you get on with your Raspberry Pi, and if you've got any ideas for projects that you'd like to see me do in the future, put those in there as well. As you may or may not know, Raspberry Pi OS is built upon an operating system called Debian. And at the time of recording this video, a couple of weeks back, Debian released a new version of their OS, Debian 13. This is also known as Trixie. Now Debian name all of their operating systems after Toy Story characters. And this one is named after Trixie the Triceratops. And this should bring some nice new features to the operating system that we can use on our Raspberry Pi. Now again, at the time I'm making this video, they haven't released an updated version of Raspberry Pi OS that is built upon Debian 13. But that shouldn't stop us being able to upgrade. Now Debian have got an ISO image of Debian 13 that is designed to run on ARM64 processors just like the Raspberry Pi has. Now I've had some trouble with this and I'll go through that later. But spoiler alert, there is a different ISO that you can get that you can install on a Raspberry Pi, although it does have some limitations. But anyway, before we start worrying about installing native Debian 13, let's go through the upgrade process on a regular Raspberry Pi running Debian 12 that's also known as Bookworm. Now here I've got a Raspberry Pi 4 running Raspberry Pi OS 64-bit edition. The only things I've done on top of this is run sudo apt update and sudo apt upgrade to bring all of the packages up to date. And I've also installed the NeoFetch tool so that we can see some operating system information here. Most importantly, that we're running Debian 12, also known as Bookworm, and we're running on an Arch 64 or ARM64 platform. So now let's go and see if we can upgrade this. Now Debian operating systems by default use the apt package manager to manage the packages on the operating system. And whenever you want to update or upgrade your packages or install something new, there's the concept of apt repositories that the apt package manager goes and interrogates to try to find what it is that you're trying to install along with all of its dependencies. The main file where these repositories are defined is slash etc slash app slash sources.list. Although there's also a sources.list.d directory where you can add extra lists in there for extra repos that it's going to look at. In this case, on my Raspberry Pi here, you can see that it's primarily looking in the deb.debian.org repository for packages based upon the bookworm version of the operating system. And there's then some extra parameters provided just to show it exactly which software collections it should be looking at. There are then other updates for security patches and also other OS updates. Now there are some other repositories here that are commented out, but since they are commented out and aren't particularly relevant to this, I won't go through those here. But the most important thing is that these sources are referencing the bookworm operating system. Now, if we change these definitions to Trixie, what will happen is that apt will start looking for the Trixie versions of all the packages that we've got available to us. And that will give us a really easy mechanism to upgrade our operating system. Now, a really easy way that you can update the sources.list to reflect the Trixie operating system is with this command here. Now, I'm going to make a little change to this in a second, but I just want to show you this command here so you can see exactly what it does. Sed is basically a command line editor, so you can make changes to files without having to open them up into something like Nano or Vi. 
This funny looking bit of text here is giving it an instruction of what to do. In this case, this first S means that we're going to do a search and replace operation. I then tell it the text that I'm looking for and then what I want to replace it with. And I separate all of these with forward slashes. I then give it this G operator, which means I want this to be done in a global context, meaning that it will replace all instances that it finds. I then give it the file name that I want it to work on. If I run this, it will just output initially just to the standard output. This hasn't actually made any changes to the file itself, but I just wanted to do this so you could see what it will actually generate. And here you can see that any instance of the word bookworm has been replaced by the word Trixie. Now, if I add a minus I option here, it means it will actually actively edit the file name that I'm giving it. And since I'm changing a file that is owned by root, I need to provide the sudo keyword as well. Now, this time when I run it, it hasn't given me any output. But if I display that file now, you can see that it has actively replaced all of the instances of Bookworm with Trixie. Now the sources list is updated, we need to get apt to refresh its list of all of the available packages. And we can do that with the sudo apt update command. Now at this point, it's not changed anything that's installed on your operating system. Since its catalog of packages has now been updated, it's identified 1,181 packages that can be upgraded. So it's going to basically replace everything on our OS. We can kick off this process with this command here. Now, of course, since we're replacing all of our packages here, and that's interacting with the root file system, we have to run this as root, so we have to provide sudo. We then use just the normal apt command, but here I'm using a special command called dist-upgrade to make it effectively treat this upgrade as a full OS upgrade. You can see in the list of packages that it's going to upgrade here, it's pretty much everything. So if I kick this off by answering yes, this will start the process of downloading all of these packages, then it will install them all. Now, obviously this is going to take quite a long time, so I'll come back when this is done. OK, and unfortunately, this has not worked. Through the install process, I could see at points it was trying to install libgtk4, but there are other packages here that have dependencies on libgtk3. And this is a bit of a never the twain shall meet moment. And so my upgrade has kind of failed at this point. Now, I suspect, although I haven't tried, that if you were using the pure CLI version of Raspberry Pi OS, and you tried upgrading that, I think there's a better chance it would succeed because all of the problems that I've seen here seem to be related to the graphical system here. But at this point, let's write off upgrading as a bad idea and let's look at an alternative. Now, if you navigate to the Debian.org website and then you click on the link just over here for other downloads, and then on this link here for ISO images for Debian testing, this says there are ISO images available for ARM64 based platforms. And this is exactly what the Raspberry Pi is based upon. However, I did download this ISO image and I tried it on both a Raspberry Pi 4 and a Raspberry Pi 5. Now they failed in slightly different ways, but both did fail. In the case of the Pi 5, I could see it cycling through different partitions on the SD card, but it couldn't find one that it could boot from. With the Raspberry Pi 4, I was just left purely with a blank screen and I saw absolutely nothing. However, I then found out about this site here, raspberry.debian.net, and this has Debian OS ISO images specifically built for the Raspberry Pi. And if you click on this link here to download tested Debian images for the Raspberry Pi, there is a version here listed for Debian Trixie. Now we can most definitely ignore the build date it shows here. This was certainly not built in 2023 because the operating system did not exist at that point. But you can see the build date for all of these images is listed as the same, no matter which version it's talking about. But you can click on this link here for the XZ compressed image, download that, 
and then you can use Blaine Arecha or whatever your favorite ISO burning software is to get that written to an SD card. So here I've selected my compressed image file. I've selected the SD card I want to write to, and then I just need to hit the flash button. This asks me to provide my password, but then it goes ahead and starts decompressing the image and will then write it to the SD card. Now that's been written to the SD card, I can just remove the SD card from the SD card writer, put it back in the Raspberry Pi and try booting it. And you can see that this has actually booted successfully. Now this allows you just to log in as user root and you don't have to provide a password at all. It's not the greatest for security, but it does work. Now what I've done here is I've created a user group called Pi, a user called Pi, and I've then set a password for him. I've then edited the slash etc slash sudoers file, and I've added the Pi user in there and given him permission to run any root command. So this is basically exactly the same as a Pi user that you would get on a Raspberry Pi OS install. This then allowed me to log into my Raspberry Pi remotely so I can show you what I'm doing way more easily. So I simply updated the packages and I then went to install the XFCE4 and XFCE4-goodies packages. And this all completed perfectly fine. So now if I go back to the console and I reboot, in theory, it should take us to a graphical environment. So far, so good. We've got a login screen. So if I try to log in as user Pi, here I now have an XFCE4 Debian 13 desktop. And I have all of the default applications I'd expect to be there, like a terminal. So this is great. This will now allow me to explore the brave new world of the Debian 13 operating system. And so there you go. I've finally been able to get Debian 13 installed on a Raspberry Pi, complete with a graphical user environment. Now, obviously, Debian still have work to do in order to get all of the packages updated that will work properly on a Raspberry Pi. So then we could just go through the upgrade process from a bookworm installation without having to reinstall from scratch. Now, especially if you've got an installation where you've made a load of modifications or you've got software on there, having to reinstall from an ISO again would be quite a destructive process. So I fully understand if this process is not for you. Hopefully it won't be too long before Debian have those packages sorted out so the upgrade process can go through with no issue. But at least we have got a way that we can get Debian 13 installed and we can start playing with its new features. But that's it for this video. Once again, if you like what you see on this channel, please hit that thumbs up button, subscribe if you want to see more and hit that notification bell so you can be told when I put a new video out. Let me know in the comments how you get on with Debian Trixie. And if you do find any ways around the upgrade process so that could work successfully, please let the whole community know in those comments. And if you've got any suggestions for other projects you'd like to see me do in the future, put those in there as well. All of the thumbs up, the subscriptions, notifications and comments provide really good interaction with the channel. And that is the way that the videos are then put in front of more people. So it really helps the channel grow. I'm trying to get to 5,000 subscribers by the end of the year. So the more interaction you guys can do, the quicker I'll get to that target. And I really do appreciate every single one of you. Thanks so much for watching till the end. And until next time, bye for now. Thank you.